So Ali was already there. I got to engage with him a little bit. He was still very young at the time, but in, just an incredible, incredible animal. Wow, this looks spectacular. Oh my gosh. This thing's just giant, 100 yeah. feet long. We came in here, we put the wetland in, we dug all this up, and originally we were gonna put the otter in here. Yeah. But now you have a new idea for the otter. Yeah. This is like <laughs> the never-ending customer. It's never-ending. <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? Uh, the Palm Professor here. I'm hit, here with my buddy Blake. Blake's exotic ranch. We are picking out some really cool stones. We are in Alabama, North Alabama. We are getting rocks ready for the brand new Otter Pond. Heck yeah, finally. This, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. Here's some of the big rocks that we got. We got some nice mossy ones. We got some big flat ones. We got some blocky pieces. We have a really good mixture of stuff, which is key for a successful water feature installation. So we also picked out some steps as well as some big old slabs. We're going to try to make like a little bit of like a water slide. So we have a couple actually, not these, but similar to this where water's going to be kind of cascading over those things. So this is going to be a really Really, really, really cool project. Blake is super excited. We're picking out a lot of good stone and we are ready to start construction in early January. Hey, what's going on everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. I am coming to you from my office right now, getting ready to do the prep work for Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch, which I am totally, totally excited about because this is gonna be an unbelievable project. Otters are one of my favorite animals. Always just curious, looking around, searching, very, very playful. And because of that, you need to engage them with as many sensory things as possible. So you have to have lots of play for these animals. Otherwise, they're gonna go crazy. They're gonna cause trouble. They're gonna get sick. Something happens. So when you engage them the way they are actually designed, if you have hiding areas, if you have different enrichment areas where they can actually go and search and problem solve and interact and play, climb and swim and hunt for food, if all these different things come together as one, then you're gonna have that right enclosure. So what we wanna do is create an incredible environment for all of those different senses. What I have here is I've done a couple quick sketches. I have an overhead view and then I have a side view as well to show you what we're thinking about. I went out and I met with Blake, kind of looked at everything. We started looking at this location for this otter enclosure. Now this was after he already purchased Ollie. So Ollie was already there. I got to engage with him a little bit. He was still very young at the time, but in just an incredible, incredible animal. He he has since picked up a female, so he has Cali now as well. The overall idea for this for this feature is to kind of create like a flooded forest type of a look. And these creatures are found typically in Southeast Asia, a very tropical environment. This is the small clawed Asian otter. It is the smallest of the otter family. But where they're gonna live is they're gonna live in mangrove swamps, rivers and creeks, the rice paddy areas and things like that, small ponds and lakes, so they could adapt to a wide variety of habitats. So what we want to do is kind of create multiple habitats within the habitat. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. So this is the overall enclosure. As you can see that I've delineated everything. So there is an existing fence on the back side, an existing shed over in this area here. That shed is actually going to be home for Ali and Callie during the evening time. They will go inside and get locked up. That's also going to be the prep area for all the food for them as well. So he'll be able to open a door or let them out on a daily basis. Over here, I have this large 1,500 gallon rainwater system. So I have 50 large aqua blocks. I'm not going very deep with them. The reason being is very, very simple. We have groundwater in the area. We also start getting into some of that bedrock, which we've hit before on Blake's property. So it's not necessarily a bedrock, but I'm gonna call it, it's like an old coral bed or an old sea floor. So it's kind of a conglomerate of reef material, shells, rocks, and things like that, that have 
and become cemented together. And it actually is really, really dense and hard, but I guarantee we're gonna find it because this is gonna be going kind of on the deep side. So you can see here, I'm gonna have a little bit of a stream system coming in. Now, when I design and build these things, we're gonna have big boulders and that type of stuff coming in all, all around here. And it's gonna look completely different when we're done. So the area of water is actually gonna be very, very small. So what I wanna do is I'm going to overdig it, put these aqua blocks in place, and then we're gonna backfill. So then we're going to take our rubber liner, we're gonna fold it back behind those boulders to get rid of that square edge. We don't want straight edge and things like that. So the excavation is the excavation. It's very, very functional. And then from there, we'll do our decorative rock work on top of it. The other thing that we wanna do here is by having, this is gonna be shallow water shallow pooling area down over in here. So that shallow pool is gonna be a lot easier for Ollie and Kelly to actually get comfortable with this enclosure. If we were just to bring them out there and throw them in this deep pond, they would freak out. They wouldn't know what to do. So it's just like a child going into a, into a new environment, allow them to adapt to it. So by having them come into this area first, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to get comfortable and then they could start exploring. The other reason that we have this large 1500 gallon reservoir is we're gonna have a lot of water in transit. This is pool area up here. And I'm marking out in blue. So that large pool is 15 foot by 15 foot. So we're gonna have well over 200 square feet of surface area and we're gonna have thick water going over all those edges. So what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to compensate for all that. That's known as water in motion. I wanna make sure that I have enough water down here in my aqua blocks so when I turn the pumps on, it doesn't draw all the water out. Now this is gonna be important moving forward because Blake is gonna have to maintain the system and if he ever needs to shut anything down, he he has to have the capacity in these aqua blocks down here to handle all that excess water without flooding everything out. Now, the other thing that we're doing here, not only is this gonna be an interactive area down in this lower section, but this entire enclosure is actually gonna be right here. It's actually gonna be a fence going across here. This is our concrete panel right over here, as I see much I have delineated, but there's gonna be a fence structure going all the way across tying into this existing shed. Now there is an existing fence back here. That is not gonna be part of the enclosure. Blake wants a barrier between the outer enclosure and the outside fence. So it's kind of like a redundant fence system. So what we're doing is we're gonna have another area right here along this back edge which is gonna be the fence for the outer enclosure, and then that will allow Blake access into this area for maintenance and things like that. He could also plant it. So the main pond itself, we're obviously gonna have boulders and that type of stuff down inside of here and all that. What I have down on the bottom is I have an upflow biological filter, which is kind of what I marked out right over here. So you got this little box area here. Down in the bottom of that, and I'll show you a cross section, we're gonna have our snorkel and centipede system. That's gonna force water up through everything. Now on the outside edge, we're gonna have a sunken seating area. Gonna have some steps going down inside over here. And then this right here is that viewing panel. So we're gonna have access to fully see everything inside of this enclosure. So this is a very quick drawing. This is what I sent to the concrete panel manufacturer. Again, pretty simple. As you can see here, it is eight foot by eight foot. And then we have this cutout area here, which is gonna be for the glass itself. Here is our side view or our cross section. So you can see a lot more stuff happening here. Let me start off over here in this one corner. This is that stairway going down into the sunken seating area. Here is our concrete panel over here. Then on this side, we have this body of water. This is gonna hold over 5,000 gallons. That's over 40,000 pounds of water. The majority of that pressure obviously is going straight down into the subsoil, but there's gonna be a heck of a push on that concrete panel, and that's what I wanna talk about. So this concrete panel is getting dug out, and I'm gonna pour concrete around the very, very base of it to allow us to backfill it all the way. Now, once this is completely buried, we're gonna have all this soil over here in the front as well, and then I'm gonna actually be installing some very large rocks over along the side. So there will be some rocks kind of going in here as well, which are gonna to help to resist that big push. So you could also see, I mentioned that this is eight feet from here 
all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna have about three to three and a half feet of it buried below grade. So I'm gonna have this precast concrete wall heavily reinforced with rebar buried in concrete on the bottom. The concrete panel is supposed to arrive on the first day. So what I wanna do is I wanna dig that trench, get that panel set because it's gonna set all the elevations for everything else. So once I have that panel set, then I could build everything else off of it. Down in the bottom of the pond, you can see I have another trench type system here. This is going to accept our snorkel and centipede. You've seen me install these before. This is an upflow biological filter, and I have a layer of those aqua blocks on the bottom. That's gonna help evenly distribute the water. It's also gonna create a sedimentation chamber on the very bottom of the pond. On top of the aqua blocks, different layers of river rock. That's gonna be the bio media that's gonna give us the necessary water quality. Once I have that media in place, I'm gonna have a gentle upflow of water, going through the rock and gravel and pushing any debris up that builds up on the bottom. The outfall for this is gonna be over that negative edge, which is gonna go back down into that reservoir. I know there's a lot of different moving parts on this project. It is highly complex. I have a lot of different things happening, but it will make more and more sense as you follow along on the vlog because you'll be able to see each and every one of these individual pieces. This is gonna be one unbelievable project. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's up? What's going on? How are you? Good, so it was good. two How months ago that Ed was out here, right? Yeah, and now it's warm. I know it's freezing over there. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 84 degrees and sunny. Was it two years ago? How long we built this? Three years ago. Wow. Yeah. This is a jungle now. Oh my God. It's thick over here. So all of these plants have been growing up, right? Yeah, this is like the second, the third cutting. Now, is that your bedroom? It is. You get to hear that sound. I hear it all night long. Yeah. Oh, this pond is dope. My mom liked it. This is her spot. Mine's in the back. Yeah, let's go check out. We got We got to go check out the back. Yeah, you haven't seen the finished product or Ed. Both no, <laughs> it was not running when I was here. Oh, look oh at God. them! <laughs> oh, I love the sounds too. Yeah, he's, he's getting big. <laughs> oh my gosh! No way! <laughs> he's ready for a bigger pond oh, soon. Oh, he's totally ready. Yeah, does he get fish? Yeah, we put fish in there and all that stuff. Perfect little training pond. It looks great. Yeah, yeah it looks perfect. So all the pond apples came back. Uh, yeah, for all ducks. the ducks and stuff in here. And even with all these ducks in here, you can get crystal clear water. And other oh, yeah. animals use this too, right? There's capybaras in here still, everything. <laughs> the pig drinks from the top. This is used by a pig and it's still clear. That's the power of a wetland filter. So is this a year ago we built this? This was two years ago. Two years ago. Jeez. We came in here, we put the wetland in, we dug all this up, and originally we were going to put the otter in here. Yeah. But now you have a new idea for the otter. Yeah. This is like the never-ending <laughs> customer. It's never-ending <laughs> wow, this looks spectacular. Oh my gosh, this thing's just giant, 100 yeah. feet long. See, there's turtles all around the side. Oh, totally. They're all around. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. And it looks really good. So describe what it was like when you got here. Well, what it was like when we got here, Blake and Nick were pulling all the turtles out. So they were, they had a huge hole. That went back, what, eight feet? And they were pulling out all these different turtles. And the muck and the mud was just thick. I saw that. Thick. 
So yeah. this is where Joey got buried somewhere you gotta get the over here. To get him out. Oh somewhere God. over here. He was like stuck. He was not coming out of here. So Drop a thick, nasty, uh, mucky mud down on the bottom. So we came in, had to make a roadway coming all the way down in here. Got the machine in here. Jay almost got stuck multiple times. Just digging, bringing all the slop out. He would pile it up and then Blake was running the skid loader and just kept moving it and spreading it all over the place to dry it out. Then we actually hit bedrock and then we started mixing soil in. We started putting our layers of fabric in. We came in with the uh, uh, with the crushed stone and then we covered all that stuff up and started dropping in boulders. Oh, yeah. So it was, a, it was a very systematic process. All came together. Hey, very impressive. <laughs> Congratulations, awesome. and you, this Heck guy yeah. worked hard. Oh, we everybody. love when we have a hard-working YouTuber. It was non-stop. Every, it was all hands on deck for several but days. For a fact, <laughs> if you guys come back again, it will be closed up with birds in here.